One of the very silver lining e things about it being a little bit cool year-round up here in Tromsa is that you can wear sweaters year-round. So I am over here in the middle of June talking to you with a sweater on and I feel great. Hey guys, welcome to my channel and to my first ever knitting vlog. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you for joining me. My name is Samantha, and I am the knitter and knitwear designer behind the Strikachik. I'm a fairly new knitter. I've been doing it for about two years now, but I, I knit a lot. <laughs> and one of my favorite things to do when I knit is to watch other knitters' vlogs, just because it, it feels like a much more personal medium of communication than a lot of the other social media sites out there like Instagram and TikTok. And it just feels like you're taking a bit of time out of your day to just catch up with a friend and kind of hear their thoughts and opinions on what they're working on and their kind of aspirations for design and uh, it's just, it, it feels like more than a superficial connection kind of and I would really like to be able to create a space where I can do that, where I can share some more in-depth opinions and thoughts and feelings about what I'm creating. I would also really like to make a series of tutorial videos on this channel. So I am a 100% YouTube top knitter. I, when I first started knitting, I did not know anyone else who knit. No one in my family knit. So I just had to learn everything that I wanted to from the internet. Um, and I found some really great tutorial videos out there. Um, and as I got a little bit more experienced and more confident, I kind of wanted to start making videos of my own for maybe certain gaps that I found that, oh, there isn't so much information on how to do this particular cast on on the internet. Um, and so I would love to be able to create some really comprehensive videos for knitters of all different experience and confidence levels and just hopefully provide some help there. Um, and so that's kind of, that's the purpose of this channel going into it, but uh, we'll see. If there's anything else I want to add, I want to do a couple stash tours in the future, maybe. I, oh my god, I have so much yarn. Um, but yes, I think for the time being, I want to keep it relatively simple, and I just want my podcast to focus on things that I've been working on, my works in progress, um, and finished objects, and just kind of talk about my thoughts and opinions on how things are wearing, the yarn that I've used, the design elements, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about, finished object-wise, is what I'm wearing, actually. I think you can see it pretty well, but I'll just kind of whoop up a bit more so you can get a better look. This is the Soul Dog sweater. It's actually my first ever knitwear design. Um, so this is my baby. I love this so much. Um, and it's named after the day when the sun comes over the horizon for the first time. Um, when you live in the Arctic Circle, you get essentially these three months of polar night, or murkatid as we call it here in Tromsø, um, which is essentially when you have 24 hour darkness, um, so you do not see the sun for <laughs> the months of late November, December, and the first part of January. And it can be a pretty dark, kind of sad time, especially if you aren't used to it, if you haven't grown up in an environment where you're exposed to that kind of dramatic shift in sunlight availability. And that was definitely the case for me. So I wanted to knit something that would make me feel really bright and sunny and cheery and happy and that I could wear on the first day of the sun. Coming back over the horizon, um, which in Tromsø is January 21st. So this was that sweater, Soldagen. It is knit in panels. You've got the front, oh, and I am not showing you the front. You've got the front and the back, and then you seam them together to kind of join it with a little slit at the bottom, and then you pick up and knit stitches from the body all the way down to the cuffs. Um, so it's a very, very simple construction, which is quite nice because this, uh, the cables themselves are a bit involved. 
you're knitting three different cable charts at the same time. Um, and I've kind of put them together in a way that I hope is a little bit more comprehensive. And as long as you've got like a little stitch counter by you, you are on your way. Um, and you don't really have to worry about the construction because again, squares, and then you're just seaming them together. So it's, it's not. Um, I, have, um, I have quite a few beautiful tester versions on Instagram under the hashtag soul dog sweater if you're interested in seeing how other people knit it. But yes, I love this so much. And I'm actually uh, one of the very silver lining e things about it being a little bit cool year round up here in Tromsa is that you can wear sweaters year round. So I am over here in the middle of June talking to you with a sweater on and I feel great. <laughs> Ooh, I forgot to mention earlier, actually, um, going back to the soil dog sweater. Um, I completely forgot to tell you about the yarn. It's knit in one strand of Drops Soft Tweed in the shade Citron Pie, which I believe is lemon pie or lemon pastry tart something. Um, and it's also knit with a strand of Drops Kids Silk in I want to say vanilla. Um, so it's got this kind of, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got like some mohair fluff and then the tweedy bits in the core. Um, so it is it is a quite nice combination, if I do say so myself, um, because the kids of mohair really helps you keep warm and the tweed, I mean this, I have worn this sweater so 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 much um, and it hasn't pilled. There is not a single pill on this whole sweater and I, I truly believe that's just because the tweed yarn is so resistant to pilling. Um, so I definitely recommend it um, for any garment that you don't really want pilling a lot. Like maybe something like um, a, a sweater that the sleeves might rub against the body quite a bit or a skirt. Um, I do plant in a skirt in soft tweed because um, I know that it doesn't pill and it's going to be rubbing against chairs and stuff. And so I just, you know, would prefer to use that. So, And I have written a review on Drop Soft Tweed where I kind of go into more detail about what the yarn is good for and what it may not be so great for. So you can check that out for yourself if you are on the fence about using soft tweed in a project. So that is Soul Dog, but I do have some more seasonally appropriate finished objects to show you if you live in a more climate appropriate area in the northern hemisphere and you're experiencing something that resembles summer now. So my first seasonally appropriate finished object is the Davenport camisole, which is one of my own designs. Um, it's knit in Knitting for Olives Heavy Merino, which is right here in the shade ba -ba 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 -ba, Powder Aqua. So you can just see that there. It has some really pretty variegations in it. It's got some purples and blues and greens. Um, and it's actually, um, Knitting for Olive has a really popular yarn called Merino, and this is just a little bit thicker on it. I, I think you might be able to hold Merino double to get kind of the thickness of heavy Merino, but that's what it seems like to me. It's a really, really pretty 100% Merino yarn. Um, and so this knit up very, very fast on 4.5 millimeter needles for me, and I used up less than two skeins for my first size. So it's a pretty good stash busting project. If you have some leftover, um, I would say air and weight, maybe worsted weight yarn, depending on what the yarn is. Um, it's knit in these kind of, it's got this lace patterning at the bottom that you can see here, which is just a nice little detail on the rib, I think. And then as you finish that, you continue on the rest of the body in these kind of, I want to say they even remind me a bit of like a corset. And maybe that's because I was watching Bridgerton while I was knitting this up and I was like, oh yes, the Regency, this is exactly what Kate Sharma would wear. Just, you know, um, kind of, I mean, not in public obviously, but like, uh, it, it looks a little bit corset-like to me um, because I love, I love, I love lace knit camisoles. 
But the problem with lace knit camisoles is I don't really like my bra showing. I don't like that kind of lack of coverage. And if you have the all over lace, then it kind of, it, it just, it feels a bit too much for me. So I, I wanted to keep the lace in the hem and then kind of still have a little bit of detailing to make this interesting, but not kind of see-through lace, if that makes any sense. And there's also, I designed this in a way where you can knit the waist size based on your waist circumference. And then when you split here for, oh, for the bust portion of the camisole, you can choose a different size. Um, so you can kind of mix and match depending on what your waist size is and what your bust size is, because I feel like that's something that is so variable from woman to woman, and so you can customize it to get the best fit for you and your body. Um, but yes, design elements continued. This has an I-cord bind off all the way around for a little bit of a neat finish and just to kind of keep everything in place so it sits a little bit tighter against your chest when it sits flat on you. And then you can choose to knit either one or two I-cord straps for either a halter fit or a more tank toppy fit. Um, and testers are actually, this is in testing right now, I'm hoping to be able to release the pattern at the beginning of July, after the 4th of July, so that, you know, when um, the Americans who still live in America get back from their Independence Day holidays, then they can um, cast on and get started um, if they so prefer. Um, and testers are finishing up with this now and I'm seeing so many beautiful versions in I mean obviously I, I live up here in the Arctic so it's wool all the way I love wool I will wear it year-round but other people are knitting them up in some beautiful cotton blends and linen and it all looks so so nice you can check out how other people are knitting the Davenport camisole with the hashtag Davenport camisole um, and so really, really excited for this, especially with how quickly it knits up. I mean, I gave people six weeks to knit it and a lot have finished in a week or two. <laughs> um, so as a really quick palette cleanser too, I think it's, it's, it's really fun. I, <laughs> I hope to be able to wear it more this summer, um, but always nice on vacation and my first attempt at designing a camisole. So that is the Davenport camisole. My next finished object for you is another one of my designs. This is the Slaya Vest. So it's got an all over, as you can probably see, this like mock cable lace detailing over here. So it's all lace knit. It, it's a very simple pattern with knit two togethers and slip slip knits and yarn overs. Um, that kind of looks a little bit like a little cable going down the sweater, but you don't actually need a cable needle. And so that makes the whole thing go so much faster. It's knit in Drops Air, which I have for you right here, in the shade Purple Haze, I want to say. And so you can see it's a little bit of a variegated yarn. I love my variegated yarns. Um, this has some pink, some purples, and almost bluish hues to it, um, but yes, it's. I've actually written a whole um, blog post yarn review on Drops Air um, because I love this yarn. It's. I think it's a super versatile yarn, and I use it for a lot of knits and a lot of knitwear designs, um, so you can read more about that and see why I love it so much, because I really do. This is one of my favorite yarns. Um, and this vest is knit with one thread of it. It uses, I mean, for me, I'm a size one in my designs. It used four skeins, I wanna say. Not even four skeins, a little bit less than four skeins. Three and some change. Um, but it's knit in two separate panels, the front and the back, kind of like Soul Dog is. And then it's joined at the shoulder with this Kitchener seam. But Honestly, I am so proud of this seam because, and here's the thing guys, I, <laughs> I live in Norway, right? But I am, I'm pretty short. I'm like five foot three. I want to say that's 160 centimeters. And everyone here, ever, 
yeah, so so shoulder seams for me are very important because I'm like, oh, people are gonna see those. I um, down here, so so yeah, I, I always take extra pride and care in my shoulder seams to make sure they kind of look look nice and look polished. And uh, I mean, I don't I don't want to say shop made because that's not the point of hand knits, but but just so they look clean and professional. Um, and so you seam it together, and then you pick up ribbing along the button band. So it becomes kind of a bit of a like combined sleeve cuff, and then also these button bands on the side. So this actually, the reason why we've got button bands on the sides um, is my mom. So I started knitting after I moved to Norway from the US and so she never really got to experience um, kind of being able to bug me for knits and, and me knitting something for her. And so she's been kind of, um, she's visiting in a couple months and she's been hinting that she really wants something handmade. And she, she doesn't want a whole sweater. She said, I want a vest and I want buttons on the vest. Um, and I did not want to try to put buttons on the front of the vest because that, to me, felt a little bit like a waistcoat and there are so many nice waistcoat designs out there, I just did not really feel like making one because I, I knew that the first one I knit would have to be for me and I don't really have anything in my wardrobe that I can wear a waistcoat with. Um, and so someone at my work suggested buttons on the sides. And I just thought that was a great idea because it's, it's a nice little way to take care of the, the cuff for the sleeve and also kind of add a little bit of an extra detail along the sides of your vest. And so, ah, and so that's what I did. I put buttons on the sides. Um, and then there's also a one by one ribbing and folded neckline on the collar and one by one ribbing that you pick up from the bottom of the sweater because there is a provisional cast on um, and lots and lots of Italian bind off which is just my absolute favorite bind off method because if you can see that, it looks a little bit like a rib that doesn't actually end. It just kind of keeps going. And I just think that is so, so cool. <laughs> it, it takes some time. It takes a little bit of effort, but it just, the effect in the end, I think is just really, really, really nice. Um, and this is named actually after the Cour Soleil in Nice, France, which is a flower market that sells, it, it opens every day. It's been operational since the 1800s. Um, and they have beautiful flowers and fresh produce and like Niçois cuisine and artwork that vendors sell every day just in this really large pedestrian marketplace. Um, and I did go there. My partner and I went on vacation to Nice last month and I wore the Soleil vest to the Cour Soleil and bought some artwork and some um, pâté and it was really, really nice. So Soleil vest and the reason why it's named the Soleil vest is because this cable design reminds me a bit of lilac and lavender that is sold in the flower marketplace. So that is the Soleil vest. Testers are working on it right now. And some of them are finishing it up already, which is crazy. This tester call has been out for less than a month, but it is due to be released hopefully around the end of July or early August, um, ideally. So it should still have a lot of wear by the end of the summer. I think it's definitely, it is a piece for layering. You could put it over a long dress like I do. I love to wear my vests over long dresses. You could also wear it over like a shirt and jeans, which is one of my favorite fall style methods. Um, so really nice for going into late summer, early fall, I think. I've actually, as a new designer, I've tried to take a little bit of um, inspiration from how other designers time and release their knits because, I mean, obviously they've learned from experience. And so it's kind of a little bit of a like fast track to just kind of, you know, um, understand what they've learned and incorporate it myself into how I'm looking at my design process. And what a lot of people say is that they, they start their designs so that they can get them tested and get them released before whatever is seasonally appropriate. So you find yourself doing a lot of summer knitting in kind of the early spring, like March-ish, and then you start knitting sweaters now for fall and winter releases. And so that's what I've been trying to do. 
So a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you as like my finished objects that are going to be released really soon are you know, stuff that I started knitting way back when. Um, and then the works in progress are mostly kind of, you know, more fall themed or maybe early winter works in progress just because I'm trying to get ahead of that and, and start my just start my design process the way that they have kind of optimized theirs, in a way. So yes. The one finished object, though, that I do have for you that is not my own design or seasonally appropriate um, is just something I needed to knit as a bit of a palette cleanser, I think, from all the thinking and the grading and the small needles and all of that good stuff that I've been working with recently. This is the olive sweater from Knitting for Olive and it is it is so nice and so warm. Um, it is knit in one strand of oh, hello there extra yarn and <laughs> one strand of Knitting for Olive it's pure silk and four strands of Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair held together. So I, I mean it's called the olive sweater so I had to use pure silk and olive, and then soft silk mohair in dusty olive. And so this is the two yarns. I absolutely adore knitting for olives yarns. Um, they're extremely ethical. They're very, very transparent about where their yarn comes from, who is involved in the manufacturing, and what happens to the animals from which the wool is taken, or the silk, or whatever else type of fiber. Um, and so it's it's pretty pricey, um, but it's great quality yarn, and it is again very very ethical, and um, you can feel you can feel good about yourself as you knit it up. And um, obviously, I <laughs> holding four strands of soft silk mohair together um, was a bit expensive for me, a poor PhD student. So this was my parents' Christmas present to me. Um, was I took a trip to Copenhagen this past Christmas. And while I was there, I stopped in at the Knitting for Olive shop. And it was, it was like a dream come true. I had been admiring their yarns and kind of looking at them in other yarn stores around here, but to just kind of see all of it on just these walls, kind of, oh, it was amazing. Um, and so I bought enough for this sweater and also for the Barbro Blusa, which is unfortunately only available in Norwegian and Danish right now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I can read Norwegian patterns, so I'm going to knit that, and that was sponsored by my parents as their Christmas present to me, so this is funded by my mom and dad. <laughs> Shout out to them. Um, it's actually, it's very, very thick. It's knit on 8mm needles, and because it is, I knit it up really, really fast. I finished the body in a day, and then the sleeves in a weekend, and then the yoke in a day. So. I mean, it just, it breezed by, and I was so happy that um, when I finished, it was still cold enough out that I could wear this the very next day when it was done blocking. Um, ordinarily, I guess if I still lived in the States, I'd have to wait, and that would make me so sad. Um, but no, year-round knits. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I think that Knitting for Olive has discontinued the pattern for the olive sweater. Um, I believe it's because they received some um, feedback from knitters who said that it was a little bit hard to follow, and I, I kind of see what they mean a little bit, um, but I'm still happy that I bought this pattern when I did, because they have replaced it with the um, olive turtleneck, I want to say, but that's it's kind of a different design. It's got ribbing at the bottom instead of this scalloped hem. Let me just hold that up over my face so I can show you. Instead of a scalloped hem, it's got ribbing at the bottom. Um, and it's also knit on thinner needles. It uses a different yarn composition, and I really just wanted this on really thick needles. So I am happy with this, but just be warned, um, I am linking the olive turtleneck instead, so it is not a carbon copy of what this is. So that is it for my finished objects that I have to show you, um, and I'm going to move on to talk about my works in progress. And there are a few of them. So I'm going to start, I think, with my longest running work in progress, which I feel so bad about, but this is 
Oh, oh, let's see if I can. <laughs> I just put a sleeve on the needles with my body. <laughs> and uh, it's behaving all kinds of ways. So this is the start, not the start, I wouldn't say the start, this is quite a bit of my Arctisk Sommergenser for my boyfriend. Um, and I am, <laughs> I will admit, I am a bit of a selfish knitter. I really enjoy knitting for myself. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I honestly, if you have put in the time and the effort to teach yourself to knit and you are the one spending the time and the effort knitting, um, you should absolutely not feel bad being a selfish knitter. And I, I definitely acknowledge, I acknowledge that I am, but this poor guy has been waiting on this sweater for months. I think I cast it on in December. We bought the yarn last summer, so it has been almost a year that he has been waiting on his sweater. Um, and this is actually, it's from a design by a Norwegian knitwear designer called Linka Neumann, and it's in her book, Vilmark's Gensere, the second version. It's unfortunately, it's only in Norwegian, I think. And actually, that's, that's why I taught myself Norwegian so fast, is I really just wanted to be able to read Norwegian knitting patterns, um, because they're so beautiful. A lot of them are just so pretty, and they're not available in English. So it's going to look, oh, that is showing you the script. This is showing you the picture, yes. Yeah, it's gonna look like that. Um, and the colors that he has chosen for it are these little sunset -y shades in Let Lefty. Let me just hold those all together for you. Um, and I'll put, I'll put the, the Ravelry project page down so you can see the shade names because I do not remember what these are um, name-wise, just the, just the shade codes. Um, so Let Lefty, if you've never worked with it before, is this 100% Icelandic wool. And it's super, super bitey. Um, and, and that essentially just means that it, it, it's, it's kind of rough. It's very kind of unprocessed, it almost seems, wool. That's just, it's really, really good for outdoor garments. Um, so if you're skiing, if you're hiking, if you're sitting at a campfire, if you're um, just, you know, roughing up your sweater a little bit and just uh, taking it out on a, on a trip with you outdoors, this is a great, great material for that because in those cases you are not usually just wearing your sweater right on your skin, right? You've got maybe some long underwear or a couple layers underneath your sweater and then you've got this as kind of an insulatory layer on top. Um, and he, I, <laughs> I hope he's okay with this because he doesn't really like scratching so much, but for the main body, I decided to go with Drops Lima instead. Um, because it is, if I can show you somehow, just try to yank some of that out of the skein. It is a pretty similar width to Let Love Be. It's got the same number of meters in a 50 gram ball or skein. So it should, and I've knit myself an outdoor sweater in Drops Nema before where it called for Led Lepi and it was, it was perfectly fine. Um, so I expect it'll be the same for him, just to like avoid a little bit, because I don't think he quite understands how itchy it would be if he tried, to, if it touched his skin. So I'm trying to mitigate that a little bit by putting the Drops Lima in as the main color. Um, and, you know, he, he really wanted these specific colors for the accent, so it had to be Let Lepi. Um, <laughs> and people, when I mention that I'm knitting a sweater for my boyfriend, they always, always see fit to remind me about the sweater curse, which I take it is a pretty common knitting belief, myth, um, thought, I guess, um, that if you knit a boyfriend or a fiance or someone who is not your husband a sweater, then they will leave you when you have finished the sweater. And so sometimes when Kevin kind of rags on me for not finishing his sweater, I bring up the sweater curse and I'm like, oh, but I just don't want you to leave me. So obviously, you know, I gotta take my time on this and wait until we're, uh, yeah, to finish it up. 
which obviously I'm not going to do. I'm going to finish his sweater for him, poor guy. But it's just, it's kind of a fun little thing to rag on him about. So yes, that is my longest running work in progress that will hopefully be finished before the fall so that he can really use it for um, hiking and skiing when the weather gets a bit cooler. So yes, I, I am <laughs> saying it on camera so that you hold me accountable. Please hold me accountable. I do not need to cast on a whole bunch of new designs before I finish this poor man's sweater. <laughs> um, my next finished object, and now I'm kind of amassing a pile of stuff, so I'm just gonna rip it off to the side and pick up something else. My next work in progress is the Menlo sweater, which is another one of my designs. Um, and it's actually, it's almost done. I am so proud of myself because actually the first draft of this vlog I filmed, I hadn't even cast on the second sleeve. It was just this kind of armhole pit thing. But now I am almost done. So next time this will be a finished object for sure. I am manifesting that now. Um, it is knit in Rowan felted tweed in the shade pine, I want to say. This is kind of, this is attached, so let me just move the whole thing up. It's, it's a tweed yarn that's got these flecks of white and orange and blue. It's just a really, it's not focusing, but it's a really pretty yarn regardless. Um, and I bought it on Lovecrafts in December of last year, November or December, I don't remember which, but it's because they were having a big sale on Rowan yarns, and I had never tried Rowan yarns before, um, and I was really keen to buy some and try it out, and Lovecrafts um, takes care, as far as I'm aware, they take care of all of the import duties, because I did not get hit with um, customs fines, even though my order was above 500 crowns, which is like less than 50 euro, a little bit less than 50. Um, and Norway usually will slap those fines on you if your import is more than 300. So I'm guessing they took care of it in the price. But anyway, this is, I bought six skeins from them, and this is my sixth skein. And I was a little bit worried about yarn chicken here because I, I kind of, I was like, oh gosh, everything that I've seen that uses Rowan felted tweed uses at least eight skeins for the smallest size. Um, I am so, I mean, I can get it here. I, my local yarn store does carry Rowan Felton Tweed DK. The problem is that they charge 175 crowns, which is about 20 US dollars, 17 euros, something like that for each skein. So I could buy it, but I would cry. I would definitely cry after buying it um, because I'd feel so bad about that. Um, but it does look like, because I'm almost done with the second sleeve, and I've got almost a full skein, I think I'm gonna beat Yarn Chicken. Um, so I'm very, very thrilled that I will not have to buy more yarn. Um, yes, this is a cropped, kind of fitted, it's, it's pretty well fitted. Um, it's an all over cable sweater. And it's actually, um, it's originally inspired by, I saw, um, I'm in a knitting group on Facebook, and someone in that knitting group had posted a photo of Marion by Martin Story, who is a designer for Rowan, and he has made this pattern with cabled ribbing and interlocking cables that kind of go up the sweater. And I thought that was so cool um, to have this kind of this cable design that morphs into more cables and then goes back to the ribbing as normal cables. And, and, and so I wanted to do my own take on that. And as I was knitting up this diamond cable motif, they don't really, they don't interact, but they are nice and staggered, I think. So it lends a good variety and texture to the sweater. And I was reminded of Ivy falling down the ruins of Menlo Castle in Galway, Ireland, which is a place that my boyfriend and I used to go quite a bit when I was doing my master's in Ireland. Um, and it's, it's this beautiful old ruin um, that used to be a rather palatial house um, until there was fire there, and now the house has been gutted, and it's 
you've only got the outer walls and the ivy that goes down it. And I was like, how perfect is that? That just looks exactly like ivy leaves and ivy stems. And so it got the name Menlo Sweater. It's like, <laughs> it's a pretty, it's a pretty slow knit. I have to be honest about it. Um, and so because of that, I put out the tester call. I think it's been a little over a week ago now just because I really, really hope to release this sweater in the end of August or the beginning of September. And I wanted to give testers at least three months kind of to really be able to knit this up. And of course, as per usual, larger sizes only have to knit one sleeve. Um, but yeah, I just kind of, I jumped the gun a bit, I put it out, but yeah, I'm almost done with mine, so I will be able to have some real finished object photos by the next video. Maybe I'll even wear it. Who knows? Um, I've also written a yarn review. I write a lot of yarn reviews, <laughs> but I've written one on Rowan Felted Tweed DK because I really, really liked this yarn, and it's always super fun to use a new-to-me yarn. Um, because I, I love yarns like Drops Air, they're tried, they're true, I'll go back to them time and time again, but I, I do like experimenting with other brands and other types of yarn just to see how they wear, and to also be able to knit with a more accessible variety of yarn so that people around the world can knit my designs. And that sounds a little bit haughty, but I, I do have people who test it for me that live in different parts of the world, so it would be nice if I could choose yarn alternatives that I knew would be good replacements for yarn that I use in certain patterns. My last work in progress that I have for you is actually my most recent work in progress. So this, and I hope this picks up well. This is a cardigan design that I, oh, and it just immediately got brighter. Could you <laughs> auto adjust? Um, but it's picking up more orange than it is in real life. It's this little cropped lace knit cardigan that I started knitting when I got home from this. Um, and the reason that's so important is because it's knit in yarn that I bought while I was in this because of course the first thing you do when you go on vacation is look up the yarn stores in the area and proceed to buy all the yarn that they sell, which I stopped myself from doing, but I, I did pick up quite a bit of yarn. Um, I'm not sorry to say because new yarn is great, especially when it is locally sourced. Um, so this is the yarn that I picked up. This is how much I have left of it actually for the second sleeve. It's about 70 grams. So hopefully that's enough. <laughs> I hope so because I don't know how I would get more of this yarn here. Um, but this is called Duvet d'Anjou in the shade Pâté d'Ancôte. And do not ask me for the translation please of any of that. Um, but Duvet d'Anjou is a really, really pretty, soft, warm mix of Angora and Merino wool. It's actually Angora, I believe, from a, a region called Anjou, and that's why it's called Duvet d'Anjou. Um, but it is, it's a fairly thin yarn, and it's knit on, they suggest 4.5 millimeter needles, which I actually think is a bit too big for this yarn um, to knit something kind of tight. But I did use 4. Point, ah, no, no. <laughs> I did use 4.5 millimeter needles actually for this cardigan because I always size up the needles when I lace knit. So it was good for this. And actually the motif is from a vintage book of knitting patterns, which I was really, really excited to find. I was scrolling through, there's this Norwegian book website called Odd Libris, um, and I was looking for Fair Isle books, actually, because I'm really interested in making a Fair Isle, like, rest garn, uh, is the Norwegian word, but you would say leftover yarn uh, sweater, just with different motifs. Um, that was traditional Feral, and Adlibri suggested this book as well, in addition to the Feral book I picked up. And I was like, huh, interesting, um, traditional knitting patterns from different areas of the world, 
that could be cool. And what it turned out to be actually was a little bit of a treasure trove um, because this is a reproduction of a book from 1962. Um, and it's actually, it's an unabridged one, so it's, it's exactly the same as the 1962 book, which is super cool. They've got all these pictures of these patterns and, and kind of like based on the region. So, so you can go through and say, oh, I want to see what they would knit in, God, what is this? <laughs> uh, in France or in Spain, like these are some Spanish knitting patterns um, that were around in the 1960s. And I presume because they're traditional, they were around before them. So as someone who really, really likes travel inspired knitting and culturally inspired knitting, this was amazing. Um, and so I did end up going with a French florette design. And I actually am going to end up, I think this has reminded me a lot because of the color and because of the pattern itself. It reminds me a lot of poppies. And so you find a lot of poppies in the Bagneux Valley in the Provence. So I think I'm going to call this the Bonnier Cardigan. It's a cute little name. And it has big sleeves. <laughs> that was, it was quite accidental. Um, the sleeves were a bit of a like, well, I have this many stitches for my sleeves and I'm gonna keep knitting them. Um, and so they just ended up being really poofy sleeves and I'm not entirely disappointed with that. So it's gonna be a poofy sleeve cardigan. Well, poofy, flary whatever you want to say, whatever this evokes for you. Um, and it's going to be rather cropped, so you can wear it over high-waisted jeans or over dresses. Um, and as soon as I get the second sleeve done, I think I'm going to do a double knit button band around. Hopefully I have enough yarn to do a double knit button band, otherwise it might just end up being a knit button band, but we will see. Yes. So that is going to be hopefully a finished object as soon as I can finish the Menlo sweater. Um, and as I do that, plod along with my Arctisk Soma Genser for poor, poor Kevin, who has been waiting on his sweater. Ooh, and a fun little thing about, because they actually, they um, have the yarn in La Trogerie, the yarn store in France where I bought this yarn. They have yarn in these huge, huge hanks that they just hang on the walls. And when you ask them for, like for this, I, I asked them specifically for 240 grams of yarn. And they will give you yarn to the nearest 10 grams that you ask for. So they will take it off the hank and they will wind it down and they will weigh it and they will kind of like cut these little skines for you. And then when they sell you the yarn, they give you these little cards. Um, one for each kind of yarn and why was just it's super super cute because you've got the little the little um, angora rabbit over here and you've got the uh little merino sheep over there and i just it, it's just such a cute little touch i just love this um i i obviously i wouldn't throw it away just because i need this for blocking information and, and um uh gauging and such but it's just so cute love this so yeah thank you so much for tuning in to listen to me talk about my works in progress and my finished objects hopefully i'll have more finished objects for you next time and a couple more cast-ons if this uh trend of knitting all the time continues um i would absolutely love to chat with you and know your opinions on the designs i'm making and the yarn i'm using and to hear about what you're making um so um subscribe and leave a comment below if you want to see more um or if you would like to come over and say hi i'm over on instagram and tiktok and ravelry as the sticker chick and you can also find me on my own website the so yeah until next time bye